So good afternoon, Oz Active. My name's Reese, and I represent Technogym, the world's leading wellness solutions provider. And today we want to present to you our performance training CEC course and provide a bit more information around that as to how we came about building this method, which essentially can be applied to almost any aspects of training, whether it's PT, whether it's your own training, whether it's group fitness, or even rehab or medical. This methodology, which we're going to run through today, is going to really dive into the underpinning philosophy, let's say, behind our um, Technogen performance range. Now, I want to take this opportunity to thank OzActive for allowing me to talk about this today. And you can see here um, that our next course on performance training held at our Technogym Experience Center behind me will be on the 29th of April. So I'll put this QR code up a bit later on again, if you did want to register for that. It's got six CCs. So yeah, feel free to register as we go through or any questions, my contact information is down there. So let's get cracking. Now we'll have a QA and a at the end. So feel free to put some messages in the, in the question and answer box or the chat, we'll come to them at the end. So firstly, I wanna give an introduction to Technogym, who we are, what we're all about. So as you can see here, the wellness company was founded in 1983, during which was a time where bodybuilding was ripe. Now our founder, Nerio Alessandri was convinced that physical activity had an even greater value um, rather than just bodybuilding in itself. And from this, they started the company in their family garage. As you can see here, this was our first ever piece of equipment, the hack squat, which is actually on show in our HQ in Italy. And this is where the whole company really started. And today we now have moved to this Technogym village in Cesena in Italy. And this is our HQ of the company. And you can see here that um, the design is really, really strong, which is definitely the same across a lot of our products because we really do pride ourselves on the design. But I was fortunate enough actually to spend two years here um, working in the R&D department for the education team. So fortunate enough to see firsthand essentially the flow from where products start, where the idea starts, let's say, and where they finish. And that's what we're talking about today. The performance training method, the fact it was created from a problem we had in the industry, um, started with a method and then we built products around this method, which essentially what we're talking about today can be applied to anything beyond Technogym products as well, because the whole philosophy encapsulates the way we um, approach performance training, let's say. So over 30 years of wellness innovation, we've seen development from product only to more nowadays, a digital driven ecosystem. And I'm sure some of you can relate to some of these um, products here across the, the continuum. But we're really, really um, happy to say that we are the official partner and supplier to various different sporting institutes. And this is where the underlying methodology we're gonna talk about today has stemmed from because we've been the supplier to the last eight Olympic games and we needed a solution of products to enable athletes to train. But not only athletes, we needed these products to also fit with the general pop. So we looked at the way athletes train and we filtered it down to identify four key pillars of performance, let's say, and we needed to make sure our product range could be trained across these four pillars. But beyond athletes, it's important, and I wanted to mention this, given that um, Oz Active's positioning to get the world, uh, to get Australia moving um, more and more often, is that we always fall back on this wellness pyramid because we talk a lot in Technogym about wellness and the experience of wellness, which encapsulates physical activity, nutrition and a positive mental attitude. And it's in, um, in our kitchen over there, we've got this pyramid on the wall and it's always there reminding us that it's not only about the, the fitness, let's say, it's also about the movement, the nutrition and mental attitude to essentially give more energy, to make people feel like they're working more efficiently, living longer, 
um, combining all of these. So what I'm talking about today, the term performance isn't just elite athletes. Performance is a relative term that can be applied to almost anything. You know, performance of a given task, a task washing the dishes is essentially or could be considered to be the same as to performing in a sport because a task has an end goal. So it's a relative term and bear that in mind as we're talking through the presentation today. So let's get into it after a bit of an introduction. Now, technology performance training. Like I said, we have, we came up with this method off the back of the work we've done with the Olympics. We needed a solution for athletes and this is where we, we came from. So I'm gonna skip through this. Essentially, what we're talking about today then is an introduction to the course that we offer. So what, the aim of this webinar and the course itself is to ups upskill candidates or you guys to understand and deliver this performance experience. How do we do that in the webinar and in the workshop is through um, the three different learning styles here. So auditory, visual and kinesthetic because we can then really dive into each individual um, candidate to ensure that they get something out of this course. So obviously today is gonna to be a bit more auditory, but hopefully we can see you in our showroom to get a bit more practical down the track. Now, the outcomes of this webinar and the course itself is introduce the technical performance training method to upskill you, whether you're trainers, group fitness instructors, or even just fitness enthusiasts to understand how tech and gym performance training can benefit you, your facility and your members or clients. And to give you a simple framework, which potentially you could take from this and apply that to your own training and programming. So let's start with the aim. The aim of this technogen performance training method is all about providing a complete training experience with performance and functionality at its heart. Now, we ask the question all the time, what's the key words that you can take from this? Now I've put them in bold. So the term complete training and experience to us that encapsulates the balanced development of the pillars of performance that we've identified from these athletes. So power, agility, speed, and stamina or pass. If you can train across those four pillars, then you're going to get a complete balanced development of these, of the performance um, metrics. But not only that, not only the physical, but also the social, the mental um, and psychological aspects of training. When we're delivering this method, whether that's to a client in a PT session or in a group fitness class, we want to consider the whole experience. So this whole holistic approach to training, not just the physical stuff, right? It's all about your environment, the organization of the session, the programming, we want to offer a complete training experience because nowadays, if you look at millennials, Generation Z, they want an experience. They want to be able to take something away from that session. Um, next up, the other two points, performance and functionality. So like I said earlier, performance is relative. Functional training has seen a lot of um, interesting things in, in the media and in social media these days. It's quite often thought that, well, people think that an exercise is functional if they see it on Instagram and it looks cool, but really it's about being able to move efficiently with minimum pain. And when we're talking about functionality, it's relating to how functionally and how efficient you are at performing a task. And that's where performance and functionality kind of fall in together. So providing a complete training experience with performance and functionality is at its heart. This is essentially the aim of this performance method. Moving on, so how do we want to achieve this? This is a solution to maximize the performance potential of its users. And that's a nice term, the potential. And since moving out to Australia, I've noticed that a lot of, um, a lot of people in the industry who take part in fitness are very interested in sport as well. So this performance potential almost gives them a platform to build. And that's another thing with exercise, exercise is, it's never, there's no finished goal because there's always something to improve on. 
This concept is, is, a, is a concept to achieve total athletic development. And when we're talking about athletic development, I'm talking about performance of those four pillars. So power, agility, speed, and stamina. This is for everyone, not just elite performance athletes. And I talked about that earlier. And at the foundation, we always talk about the fundamental movements and technique as to what activity you're doing. So whether that's your running gait, your rowing stroke, or your cycling, um, your pedal uh, circularity and all of that. We're, all of this is at the foundation to everything we do because that's the step one in the journey, let's say. Now, this stemmed across, what we've done now is at Technogym, I said before, it's not just products now. It's the combination of these six pillars. So you've got the method, which is what we're talking about today and what the education is all about. Education, and that's over to you guys to educate your clients and members to why this might be important for them. Through, obviously, Technogym equipment, we've got, um, let's say, the multi-drive technology, which is embedded into our skill line to enable you to train for power, speed, agility, and stamina. Digital, so then we can have something to take away from the sessions you do with your trainer or your class. And obviously, it's good to market, and the design is always something that we really um, take into account at Technogym. So now what we can do, we can create these experiences within a, in a gym where you can apply this training method. And the idea behind this Club 4.0 philosophy, which this method sits, is the fact that we wanna expand upon engagement and variety within your programming and within club group fitness, let's say. Because traditionally a boutique gym, whilst it has an amazing atmosphere, so engagement, it may lack variety because they only offer one solution and one type of training method. Whereas a traditional club might have a lot of variety because they've got different classes, different offerings, different trainers bringing their knowledge into the building. Whereas the engagement might be a bit lower because there's, no, there's not as great, let's say, um, environment because of the lighting, because of the, the music pumping. So this is kind of where we want to sit as Technogym now. And today we're going to talk about how we can apply this through the community to create an experience, to build connection with our members, whether that's in a class or within group fitness, personal training, I should say. So give you a couple of seconds. If you were to build a performance-based training method yourselves, or you might already have a performance-based training method that you fall back on, have a think, what would this be? Because this is, the, this is the point where we start the education when we deliver this course. Because one thing here at Technogym, we don't tell you what to do. We try to facilitate as much as possible because we want you to apply your philosophy into our system because that's the best way for not only you guys to learn, but also for us to learn. We're really, we take this facilitative approach in our education because then that's probably the best way and more realistic way for you guys to learn and relate to something. So hopefully you've had a thought about that and it's important to establish this before you even start um, programming or delivering group classes because this is your identity as a coach or a trainer and if you don't have an identity then you have no brand and that's one of the key things I think you, you can take from this this methodology offers a nice simple pathway let's say to build your identity as a trainer so this is probably the most important slide from today this is the methodology of the Technogym Performance Training Method. Now, I'm gonna say it's nothing new. It's a way of simplifying the journey, let's say, from a new user to a more experienced user, or even within a, in a class or a training session, going from warm up through main session through cool down, you could use this as a, a template for your sessions as well. So there's so much application you can have. Now, at the bottom there, you can see the building phase. Now, this essentially is the foundation to everything we do. You can see here that we've got flexibility, we've got strength and stability as the underlying components of the building phase. 
Now you can apply them to the fundamental movements. So let's say we're looking at a squat, for example, as one of the seven fundamental movements. Before we start anyone's program or before we, we push someone to progress, we need to make sure that one, they're flexible or mobile in that squat. We can do that through um, testing. They're strong that they can squat, you know, their body weight at least, and then a bit more progression, different angles, all of that. And they're stable. So they can hold isometrically that squat because obviously that is a key thing to be strong in your position as well as the movement. So this building block is essentially the foundation that across the seven fundamental movements, we need to make sure they're strong, stable, and flexible. You could also apply this to technique. So when I say technique, let's take running, for example. If you look at the model of running, essentially you've got cadence, so set frequency, step length. Underneath those, let's say another tier down, would be your ground contact time, your propulsion time, your flight time. All of these then come into play to improve your running technique. And obviously you guys as coaches can support your clients um, to understand and develop those as the foundation. Or if you're lucky to have one of our skill runs, the skill runs got built-in technology, biofeedback, the rowers got biofeedback, the bikers got biofeedback to help you outline or identify the different metrics that underlie or underpin the um, technology of the mode of exercise you're doing. Now, this is good because obviously that establishes the quality of movement. Now, say, for example, a member and you're confident that they're strong, stable, flexible across the seven fundamental movements, we can then take them through to the improving stage, which is now aiming to improve upon their movement capacities and apply that to a more power, agility, speed, and stamina way. All right, so let's use that squat as an example again. Once you're confident that they're strong, then you could apply a more power stimulus. You might progress or regress that exercise to achieve power. You might add a bit of a reactive drill, like a squat and a catch to apply that to agility. You might make them perform velocity-based training to ensure that they're training at the right speed. Or if you're, let's say squat again, for example, if you wanted them to, if you're doing CrossFit, for example, and you've got a load of reps, um, ultimately the idea of that is in CrossFit to get as much work done as you can, apply that to a longer duration to hit stamina. Once you've got that, let's say, as a, as a progression, we then talk about this competing. Now, competing is all about engagement. It's about retention. It's about keeping your members through the art of community. And you saw that in a slide earlier. Community is huge. And off the back of, obviously, COVID and all of that, that's the thing I think is huge in the industry now, is developing a community because people haven't experienced that over the last two years. Creating a community through this method and through the group that you're working with, if you're in group fitness, or even through challenges, if you're on a one-to-one, -one, developing the community, developing autonomy is really important for retention and bringing people back into the gym. So this is the, essentially the method. And during the course, we uh, dive into this method and apply it to different machines, whether that's one of our technogen pieces or whether that's a kettlebell or whether that's a, a skipping rope, you know, you can apply this to everything, but it's essential that we built this method before building any products because that's our identity at the end of the day. It's no good building a product and trying to think about the method after it. This approach goes from the bottom up and I think it's a really nice, simple method which you could apply or you could apply your own methodology into as a nice structure for whether you're doing an individual session, starting off with building, then improving, then competing, or even using this as a periodized training method, you know, through six weeks of building, six weeks improving, a couple of weeks competing before, you know, a competition if you're dealing with an elite athlete, you know. All right. So some of the features and benefits. So this training methodology develops the physical and coordinative components of performance into a more integrated structure. It offers the participants, let's say, a process to develop and perform and potentially compete 
And when I say compete, you'll see later that it's not just about competing against others, to competing about against yourself or as a team, because that's the way you develop community. It's effective and safe. So if you're looking at the general physical prep approach, we're building the foundations first, the movement quality before progressing through. And like we said earlier, community um, to engage and reward. Other benefits there, this integrated training approach categorizes performance. So it, we can see consistent development. And this is an interesting one there in the bottom left. So actually by training across these four pillars and exposing individuals to different ways of training, this study here shows that those athletes who trained in one sport only were 70% more likely to get injured. So again, this method definitely has a nice um, approach to reducing the risk of injury because you're exposing them to different methods of training. Power training, agility, speed, and stamina gives you a nice balanced overview um, nice balanced approach to training to help reduce the risk of injuries. So it's not only on the performance side, but also on the reduction of injury risks. Cool. So like I said, my cool animations here, I wanted to put this slide in, but essentially we're building the foundations, building the building blocks. We're then improving the specific pillars and then applying these pillars to more realistic activities. So nice and simple approach which you guys can definitely take and use with any piece of equipment out there. And this is essentially the structure of the education. We start by looking at the building. How can you then develop that and then progress further? So let's dive into the building stage a bit more. Now, you might be thinking, how can you build on a treadmill? Well, obviously, if you've got a Technogym piece, you can, let's say a skill mill, for example, you might've seen our curved treadmills. We've got the multi-drive, which you could apply resistance to that to actually slow someone down. So a lot of people think this resistance dial makes it harder, but actually you could use it on the flip side and make it an exercise easier to develop their coordinative patterns. Because if they move slower, then they're able to really focus on that movement a bit better. But if you didn't have any Technogym equipment, we could then look at the underlying foundations of, let's say, a kettlebell swing the building, you know, ensuring that they can hinge at the hips well, ensuring that their upper body's in a good position. Um, we want to apply this building phase to the seven fundamental movements, which then allows us, if you're in a group fitness environment, provided you're programming around movement and not exercise, to apply a regression and a progression so then everyone in the class can take part because that is inclusive, an inclusive um, approach there. So what we want, seven fundamental movements, progression, regression. And we really dive into this in the course, not only to, you know, let's say, what's a progression of a bodyweight squat? People typically will say load or range of motion. We actually dive into the different variables you can use as progression and regression. So actually there's 10 and we, empower you guys during this course to come up with these 10 and coach them back as well. So there's a lot of application in this course. So as you can see here, seven fundamental movements, make, we need to make sure that we're strong, stable and flexible across your push, pull, squat, lunge, hinge or bend, rotation and also locomotion. So there's a big practical element here and it's a great opportunity to learn off others and off Different, different people from different industries because they might have an approach which you haven't thought about or you might have an approach which they haven't thought about. And that comes back to the facilitation. You know, it's not us telling you what to do. It's all about, right, okay, we're, we're all knowledgeable in this room. Let's put all our ideas in the middle and share it all out. Now, we talked about those variables of progression. Now, we've identified... 10 different variables. I'm sure you guys could think of more, but this is a, if anyone comes to do the course, you might want to remember this slide because we'll test you on it. But for a fundamental movement in the building stage, you guys as coaches need to know when you're coaching, 
how to adapt an exercise on the fly. Quickly resort into one of these variables, which you can identify that a user might need to essentially perform that exercise safer or more effectively. So speed and tension time, your plane of motion, how you grip and support, for example, a push-up, different grips are harder. Stance and surface, obviously, if you're on a balanced dome, it, the squat is a lot harder. Range of motion, obviously, then you can apply specificity into this as well. If you're a sprinter, you don't need to squat as deep. Joints involved, obviously, more joints involved, more intent the exercise, intensity driven the exercise is. The load, but also the type of load, so like elastic bands, um, chains, if you're doing like a bench press with change, it changes the type of load. Lever length and also the complexity. But also the final one there, which is often missed, is the perceptual components of a progression or regression. So actually making it more agility focused because agility isn't just change of direction, it's also how you react to a stimulus. And everything we do when we apply this, going back to functionality and performance, we need to be able to apply what we do to the outdoors. And this is where perceptual components of progression come into play because if you're getting off a train and you step down, you need to dodge you know, someone coming at you, you need to be able to react quickly. So this is often missed, which I think is really important. Okay, moving on through the improving stage. What we do here is we essentially want to build on movements, okay? And we wanna be able to develop skills. So we've got a nice approach where you go from movement through to the capacity which is power, speed, agility, stamina. The first, like what we talk about is, is knowledge. So what is knowledge? So knowledge is an understanding. It's mental, it's theoretical rather than practical. And it's important that your members have knowledge of these movements before progressing. And you can gain this knowledge, you know, from you as a coach, from books, from research. But having knowledge doesn't necessarily mean that you you can do the actual exercise and that's where this progression regression comes into play. So what we want to do, we combine movements to create actions because pretty much everything we do in life has one or combination of two movements. From there, we develop abilities. So an ability is an innate characteristic. You're born with it. I've got an ability to sprint, whereas someone else also has an ability to sprint, but they might be better than me at sprinting. So an ability is innate, it's your ability to perform. From there, we then add learning. So learning plus ability equals skill. So that shows you how this progression from building through improving, through competing, through learning helps develop skills. So what's the difference between ability and skill? Now, the difference really there is, it's, it's less obvious than the difference between knowledge and skill or knowledge and ability because knowledge is theoretical. Whereas you, in basic terms, abilities are natural, like I said, they're innate, whereas skills are learned. So let's say cutting your hair, you might have an ability to keep your hands steady but and cut in a straight line, but the skill is, the skill to keep your hands straight is what you learn over time. Now, skills can be developed and improved on over time by combining our abilities um, with knowledge. And these can then be improved and honed, honed down into some extent. For example, running fast is a skill, but the ability to run comes in part from having strong legs, which then is developed through regular exercise. So you can start to see how there is a difference between abilities and skills, and this is our natural flow from building to improving. It's a bit long-winded explanation, but we'll get there. So like I said earlier, once you've got your movements, once you've started to learn to apply these, we want to then develop them through our four pillars, speed, power, agility, and stamina. And finally, we dive into this competing stage, which is all about how we can engage the user. So whether that's yourself competing against PRs or trying to just get to the gym, you're competing against yourself. You know, if you're, if you're not feeling good that day, it's 
it's cold, it's wet outside, just get into the gym to just stretch is going to be an improvement. You know, you're competing against yourself. Obviously, you've got to learn to listen to your body, but this is all about competing against you as a person. Competing as a team, a great way to develop community. And finally, individually. So when you're competing against others. So that's a, a nice snapshot of the outline of this method. We then, like I said, apply that to equipment and we try to keep it nice and practical in this course. But this methodology is what we've applied to our skill pieces of equipment. So your skill row, your skill mill, your skill bike, your skill tools. Um, but there's no reason why you can't apply this to a med ball. You could still make sure they can move well across the seven fundamental movements. You can then teach them to enhance their ability, which enhances skills to get to that improving stage. And then you can apply that in a more engaging way, engaging way by creating challenges within a group fitness class or trying to beat a personal record on how many, kept, how many med balls, uh, let's say slams you can do in a minute. You know, It's a nice avenue and it gives someone a nice goal and process to progress. So I've got some references in here, which I'm sure we can share after. Um, these are all used and have been used to, un to create this method back in Italy, um, in HQ originally. Now, that's pretty much everything I had. Um, I wanted to just give an overview of essentially what this methodology is and what the training course is all about. The next course is the 29th of April from 1 to 5 p.m. here in our Technogym Experience Center, Sydney. We are looking to expand these courses beyond Sydney in the maybe H2 in the second half of the year and with our team of educators. But feel free to scan that and register. Um, the course costs $200 and you get 60 CCs out of that. But you also get to access this amazing facility behind me in our new Technogym Experience Center. But even so, you guys are welcome to pop in any time, come and have a play. Maybe we could uh, arrange a, an Oz Active workout around you um, coming in. And that's everything I had. I guess what we can do now is maybe open the floor to some questions um, from the team. I see we've got quite a lot of comments in the chat. I actually haven't, haven't uh, had a chance to look through these. So I don't know, uh, Luke, if we can jump in and maybe read some questions. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, that Reese. That was um, that was fantastic, and I can see a lot of comments jumping in, a lot of praise in there as well, which is great to see. So I continue throwing them in as well, guys. Um, I can see we've got a couple of questions. If you've got any uh, questions as well that you'd like to answer, guys, please throw them in the Q and A. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier for us to monitor, um, so we can get through them um, as well. Um, so from Sean, firstly, just ask about the slides. Um, I'm guessing, Reese, you happy to pass on the slides after this? We can organise that. Yes, we can pass it on. Um, I will say that the, the slides are provided as part of the course. So I'll provide the slides in line with the, with the course. Yeah, it might because, be. You know, we're quite um, careful on, you know, who we and where they can get to. So they will be provided as part of the course. Yeah, I think that'd be good. So Reese's um, emails down the bottom there for any, anyone as well. Um, so anyone that is looking to sort of inquire about the course or, or the slides um, in particular, um, I'm sure he's happy if you shoot him an email and, and he'll sort of set up with that as well. Um, from Dion, we've got, could you utilize team beats as part of the competing stage? Of course, yes, you definitely can. Now, for those of you who know, team beats is essentially our digital platform. Now, if I go back to this slide, I'm not sure you can still see this, but I brushed over this really quickly. But essentially, our Club 4.0 philosophy at Techno Gym is all about creating an experience within the gym. Now, these have six, six different pillars, and you'll notice here digital is one of them. And obviously, nowadays, people are more digital savvy. And say you're in a group fitness environment, our Techno Gym Team Beat solution is a great way to give more, let's say, coaching cues via videos on the screen, via heart rate training but also it allows people to take something from that group fitness class. So let's say you were applying this method to 
um, a group fitness class and that particular day you were focusing on stamina. Now, people could use the digital, could use Team Beats to ensure that they're within the yellow, maybe tapping into the orange heart rate zones. So then it applies a bit more science into your programming as well. And for example, this morning I was in here training, I was doing interval training. So let's say I was focusing on, let's say a bit more stamina, but also repeated sprint ability. So there's a bit of speed in there as well, but I wasn't programming it on time. I was programming, programming it with team beats where I would sprint, I would get to my peak speed, and then I would try and hold that until my heart rate on the screen went orange. I would rest until it went down, back down to green. So that's a whole different way of programming than the traditional time reps or distance, let's say. It was all on heart rate. So that's a great way of you know, applying team beats into this to at least get some scientific uh, programming within your group fitness classes. So yeah, it's a great question, Dion, it definitely can. Um, and actually that video I was gonna show you, but I didn't in the end. Um, a lot of our Technogen formats, so let's say this one here, the Skill X, which is our athletic performance driven format, combining the Skill Mill, Skill Bike, Skill Row, um, Racks. This is powered by Team Beats, which all of the programming we provide, or you could build your own programming around. So yeah, these Technogen formats are powered by Team Beats as well. So good question. Thanks for that, Dion. Um, we've got another one from uh, Terence. Um, any chance of expanding to Brisbane? Uh, that way they can physically attend in Queensland. Yes. There. Yeah, we will be for sure. I mean, our experience center only opened end of last year. So we're trialing these courses here first. And in the meantime, we're upskilling our technology educators across Australia to also deliver this course. And yeah, we are, we are gonna definitely replicate this course in um, Brisbane, in Melbourne, WA, different parts of the country as well. So yeah, 100%. Fantastic. Um, we've got another from Jeremy um, who asked, uh, do you offer functional mobility and core stability into your training components? Yeah, so if you go back to the method, that's the foundation. So stability definitely is a foundational component. Mobility is combining your flexibility and your strength. So 100%, that's definitely the foundation of, of this methodology. Um, and during the education, we definitely discussed that as well. Yeah. Um, Sharon asked about uh, online training. Uh, that was, I'm not too sure exactly what Sharon was asking. Online training, yep. Yeah, so, just online training. So any, and if you'd like to elaborate, Sharon, as well, we can jump into a bit more detail. Yeah, so online training, I guess, whether you're a PT or you're working out of a facility, having to provide programs to, let's say, generic members. Yet our My Wellness platform has that ability. So you could definitely apply this method into My Wellness and build programs. Um, and we're seeing that more, more and more nowadays. Obviously, people might only want an online membership because they're still not confident getting back in the gym. So thanks to My Wellness, we're able to offer this online service, which is all about you know, your programming, your onboarding challenges, um, in the app. So yeah, definitely Technogym can provide that as a solution as well. Yeah. And I think she um, was also asking specifically about the course online, if it's delivered online. Ah, okay. So part of it, there are online components. So we will then distribute some webinars around the products. So if you come to this course, you can at least get some product knowledge before attending, um, rather than having to learn the products on the day. So yeah, part of it, we, we have a few online courses which um, are embedded within this course. Uh, I think that is it for the questions at the moment. Uh, I'm just seeing if there's any others in the chat. Uh, a few other comments. Uh, thanks for that, Lyndon, as well. That's good to see. Uh, I think that's it for the questions for now. If you've got any others, guys, throw them in. Um, but uh, Reese, do you have any closing comments at all? Oh, nothing really else for me. I just, if you, if you guys wanted to reach out to me, I'll put my email back up on the screen. Happy to answer any questions you do have after this. Um, if you want more information on the course, or if you wanted a bit more of an overview into some of our formats or digital solutions at the Gym, or if you just wanted to pop in and maybe have a session at our experience center, just let me know.
yeah thanks that race um and yeah guys if you do um if you didn't jot down Reese's email or anything do so now otherwise um if you do forget afterwards feel free to get in touch with um Oz Active or myself and um we'll pass on all the details um uh, for the course uh, but thank you everyone for attending. Uh, like yeah, everyone knows you'll be getting a CC for today. So please just complete the survey afterwards um, and that'll get added automatically for you. If you have any questions about that, just shoot us an email or give us a call. Um, but yeah, thank you, Reese, and, and thank you everyone for attending. Thank you all. Thanks for your time and thanks, Luke, for the opportunity. Thanks, guys. Cheers.